Asbonge, Asbonge, Asbonge. Welcome. Another exciting uh, episode of Ama Timer series, the podcast and the radio version in partnership with Bogat Radio. You know, I, I, I can never get over the fact that we've got this platform for men, you know, for us to be able to talk about anything and everything that affects us as men, be it physical, be it mental, be it spiritual, be it financial, it doesn't matter. As long as it affects the men, we're going to talk about it. Uh, we're not going to sugarcoat anything right here. So Ringa as a machita, as fellas. And I'm excited to talk to this particular brother who also happens to share the same name as me. Kibito Waka. Kibito Waka. What's up, Taro? Okay, now Tiaka. Ah, please introduce yourself to those that don't know you, so that uh, they can they can get it. Because I don't wanna uh, 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 undersell you. <laughs> sure, my lord. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Tato Chai. I'm the head designer at Bogat Men, and I'm also one of the guys behind Bogat Radio. And yeah, there's more to me, but I'll just keep it short for now, just to be relevant. Ah, but this guy comes and tells us about his titles, which I said, we don't <laughs> care for the titles. I'm kidding. Yeah, of course, we need to know We need to know who you are. You know, you're the head designer for, for Bogart Man, and you're part of the, the team that started uh, Bogart Radio, right? Yes, so I was supposed to have you as the first episode, Moss. Yeah? Mm. Why didn't I have you as the first episode? I don't know. I don't yeah? know. There were more people. Uh, ah, <laughs> the demand was too high. You were yes. on the waiting list, so we had to make sure. But okay, besides the career stuff, mm. who is Tato? I want to know more about you as a man, you as a father, you mm. as a husband. I'm more interested in that. Right. Uh, Tato is a, a father, first and foremost, to, to four sons. Uh, Tato is a husband. Tato is a son to a um, deceased George Chai. He's a friend, he's an uncle, and um, a, a developing individual. Not a husband? Husband, definitely. Uh, you didn't mention that. Uh, I don't think your wife... Oh, uh, did he? Did he? I didn't ah, hear you. My wife would kill Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Did you say, hey, did you, did you, did you say husband first? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I, I'm, just, I, I'm just staring, you know, I'm just yeah. staring. So you've got, you've got four sons. Yeah. Uh, what are their names? Uh, the first one is Zuntando yeah. Chai. Second one, Lindo Gutle Chai. Then there is Letsatsi Chai. And then there is um, ah. Silimo Chai. Yeah, Silimo Tlokotela. We don't know your own son's name. So Ntando is your firstborn. Yes. Ntando and Ntando, first Ntando actually means Tato. You know that, right? Yes. It's a yeah. closer version of, of, of Tato. Yeah. So when you're naming your child Tato, Mara. using another language. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show, my brother. Thank this you, is really, uh, as I said earlier on, just uh, conversations uh, where we share our journey mm -hmm. and stories as men. We really want to unpack a lot of the things that we go through as men, you know, just mm -hmm. trying to obviously find different ways of, of navigating this life mm -hmm. as men. You know, you as a married man um, have your own challenges. Um, mm. a, a single guy is going through way more different challenges than the ones you're going through. Mm. A divorced guy is experiencing other challenges, and a widowed guy, you know. But at the mm. same, at the same time, in the same breath, we are all men. Mm. We are all men. We come here to share our stories, to speak, speak up some more. Mm. Why do you think it is that um, a lot of us machita are just not open to having frank and candid conversations amongst ourselves? King, uh, Okay, the way I see it is, as Majita, we grew up in a time where it was bad to show weakness. Yeah. In Dota Ikali. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You'd be, you'd be, uh, you'd be punished for showing uh, emotions, you know? But this is Nyefu. Like, yeah. if you cry, they'll call you a Nyefu. And it's Nyefu in English is, is the person who comes, who's got mucus all over. Yeah, uh, cry baby. Yeah, like, cry baby. Serious cry baby. Yeah. So, what happens is then, once you experience that, you're like, you know what, every time you have, you've got emotions to show, you hold back. Yeah. And which is bad because now you accumulate all those negative emotions. By the time they, came, they come out, ah, it's bad. Yeah, it's, it's bad. too late. It's suicide, depression. It's too late. All those things. It's mm. too late. So you're raising four boys. Sure. I can only imagine what that must be like. What are, what are, what are their ages? Just quickly. Okay. The one is 19. Untando is 19. Lindo is 16. Um, uh, Let's is six and Slim was five. And when are their birthdays? Their birthdays. Nando's 18 April. Lindo is uh, 12 June. 
Litsati is 22 October. Slimo is 1 November. Do you know I just did that? A lot of dads don't even know when the the birthday of their kids is. Hey, the end is unfortunate. Yeah, so I did that intentionally because it's important to be in tune with what's happening with your kids. Mm. A lot of us uh, uh, men make the mistake or the assumption that it's the mother's role to remember the important things when it comes to your kids, right? Mm. Because there's this perception that a man must go and provide. Mm. <clears throat> and that's how a lot of us have been raised. If you think about a typical family, a black family back then, uh, the dad would have to move to Joburg to go get work and leave the family and the and the mother back home mm. and come back on my holidays or uh, the festive season to be with the family. But that's where a lot of the issue started because now you're not there as a father to see your kids mm. growing up. Mm. You don't even know when their birthdays are. And I just did that because I just wanted to test something. And well done, bro. Like it's oh. it's it's. I shouldn't be congratulating yeah, you for yeah, it, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you can't you can't you can't yeah you can't you can't you can't give props to a fish for swimming. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly, we expect exactly. you to actually know this, but a lot of men don't. No, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't. How are you raising your boys in comparison to how your dad um, raised? Is your dad still alive? No, he committed suicide. Oh, your dad he committed died. suicide. Mm. How old were you when that happened? I was in my mid twenties. Mid twenties. Yeah. Do you know why he decided to take his life? Yeah, he was going through depression and uh, also illness. Sure. And illness because of depression. Sure. So yeah. he got sick because he was depressed. Yes. What caused the depression? Depression was it finances? Finances um, and change. You know, I wanted to say something. There. There's a problem with change management in the hood. Right. We don't know. <clears throat> we don't know how to manage change. Okay. And there's no support for change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I think that comes from uh, miseducation as well. We yeah. should be educated from an early age that, listen, you will change. Things will change. And change is you necessary. Know? And change is inevitable. Yeah, because you change and then they're like, I want to so change Chile. Okay. Oh, get a yes. Yes. Yeah, so there's this expectation that things are supposed to remain the same. So things changed in my family. Right. Right. But there was no change a plan for change manage like um, change management right uh, right right and i learned this term now mobango corporate yeah i was like damn you know some of these corporate terms can actually be in real life used in you real can apply life. them in real life and also to add to that big up to you man on the on this campaign you're doing with the with the lights yes yes the led lanterns ah big up bro they have and to study man particularly because you are targeting uh, the accounting students yes you know, accounting is such an important subject. I wish I did it in school, bro, because... Very important. When, when you understand accounting, you become accountable for... You, you understand being accountable. <laughs> you said it. It's about being accountable for uh, your own life as yes. well. It's, it starts there. So what I, what I want to... I don't know if I can go deeper into, into what happened to your father yeah, or go, if go you're comfortable. No, so so, it, yeah. so when, when your dad uh, decided to take his own life, how did that make you feel as, as a son, as a boy at the time? I mean, you're still young. Mm. When I was angry. Yeah. I was more angry than sad. Sure. You know? Uh, my my parents had you know, okay, in the first in the early stages, things were beautiful. Yeah. When it was you were the my, perfect family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the early stages. Uh, just after ninety four, uh, okay, Scotty Sire, time went on and then things started going bad. Right. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I can't put my finger on it exactly, but there were good and bad times. Yeah. All right. So I was angry at him because I think he could have reached out, but yeah. he didn't reach out. He didn't speak to anyone? Even an ego. No, 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 no. My and, dad, my and, dad was there. And your mom, he didn't reach out to his, his wife? No, my, my mom also. She she had passed away okay, so before that. Wait, hold on. So your mom passed away before your dad took his own life? Yes. What happened to, to Oled? Oled died in hospital. She was very ill. Okay. And uh, she, she, was, she was an alcoholic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Boy, too. After after a while, my dad also became an alcoholic. Did he become an alcoholic after losing your mom? More. He more. became more. Of an Do you think alcoholic. that had a, a negative <laughs> impact on me? He lost his love of his life. I get um, you definitely. And he never reached out to anybody after the loss to maybe get some help psychologically mm. as well from a professional. No, he didn't. And what made what made things worse for him is I never forgave him. Right. I only forgave him once he had died because. Uh, I didn't. I didn't understand why he did the things he did. But as I grew older, it, it started me like making sense. Ah, 
this guy also he didn't have a dad. Right. Oh, so he didn't also he, have a dad. He didn't know his dad sure. at all. This, is, this would have been your grandfather. This would yes. Yeah. Yes. So after okay, as I grew up, I understood that actually, yes, son. This guy actually needed help. Sure. There was no one there for him. So everything bad that happened is, I think, a build-up of all these things. Sure. He had no father figure. Sure. So that, that's when I actually let go and I made peace that, you know what, I actually forgave him. And I only feel bad that I could, he's not alive, that I can't tell him, which as in Papa, I understand. This is what I could have. I understand yeah. what you went through. And yes. Because he's not okay. here, you know. He's not yes. here. Yes. So how, how did you then... Okay, so you obviously laid him to rest. Did you get some help when, uh, from a professional no. just to talk about your loss, your anger, all these things that were happening to you emotionally? Did you go and sit with someone and mm -hmm. talk? To no, 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 I didn't. So how did you manage to overcome all of that alone? Actually, it's, it's crazy. You know, uh, you know, we grew up watching TV ne? and yeah. uh, listening. Uh, Hip-hop helped me a lot. Okay. I go through the stuff. I was listening to... Some real stuff like about Keres One, sure, and the uh, most they have Talib Kweli, like conscious hip hop, you know, sure. And the, that kind of hip hop I was listening to uh, spoke about self reliance, right? Personal development, being independent, yeah, going through rough times. So I, I really channeled uh, uh, through that, right? And also TV. I mean, you'd watch shows like uh, Superman, Nabo Martin, yes, how you can become different characters, correct? So I, I developed different characters, like a chameleon. Yeah, for yeah. different situations. Ah. So whenever I felt like I need help, I'd become this character who can over, uh, uh, overcome all the stuff. See. You know I what see. I mean? Mm. Sure. That's deep, dog. Mm. Have, you, have you ever had any <clears throat> suicidal thoughts? Yes. Yes, I did. And what was, the, what was the cause? Uh, just the, the abuse. The abuse. Because my father... Mm -hmm. At a certain extent, was very abusive to my mother. To, okay, physically. Yeah, very. And that's very, a story very, that a lot of black uh, kids can attest to. To mm. say that it was normal for Itaima or Anki Lubaba to to beat up a woman because that was a sign of love. Mm. Apparently, back then, mm. I don't know how they even got to that conclusion. True. Because how do you showcase uh, affection and love by beating someone up that mm. you claim to love? So the reason I'm asking if you've had any suicidal thoughts is, you know, you're in the Amatama Wellness uh, Network Telegram group, mm. and we've actually got a suicide hotline in the group for guys that might have suicidal thoughts. And I'm going to give the number out because it's important for us to also share information with our listeners and our viewers on, on our channel. Mm. The number is 0800567567. Um, That's a suicide uh, helpline. And I think it's a helpline that, you know, could help a lot of people out there if they just knew that the information is out there. So you are raising these these four boys. Um, have they had a pleasure of meeting their grandfather? The oldest one. Oh, their great. This would be their great grandfather. No, their great their grandfather. Grandfather, yeah. Yes. Have, yeah. So the the oldest one. Yeah, he's the only met. one who's met. Uh, sure. Yeah. And how does he feel about about what happened to his his grandfather? Uh well, uh, he hasn't. We haven't. He hasn't broken it down completely, but I'm part, like he said about it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because he wishes his brother, like sometimes you talk about my dad, right? Nina and I, right? And the other ones were like, oh. Who are you guys talking about? Especially the little ones, yeah. Papa, can you go and see him? I'm like, No, he's not around, you yeah. Know? Yeah, uh, that's the only time, just, just sure. It's sad a little bit. What is, um, wh what is the one thing, or maybe a few things that you wish you could have said to your father that you never got a chance to say to him, even if it's your anger towards him? Well, what do you want to say to your father if your father had to walk in right now? Mm. And he had to be here for f just five minutes, and you had five minutes with him. What did you say to him? Well, first of all, which father are you talking about? Because I've got two. The dad, your, the, your the, the real one. Yes, your yeah, father. Tell you the okay, yeah. One. Tell me about that one after you've told me about uh, your your biological father who mm. who took his own life. I would say first of all, I'd say thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'd say thank you for the good and the bad, because what I did was I took everything, every bad thing that he did, and I told myself that I'll never do it sure. as, a, as a husband or as a man going forward. Right. And I'd also say, I'm sorry for what he went through. Sure. Okay. And then I'd tell him that I understand. Those are the three things. Sure. What yeah. do you understand? I understand why he was who he was. Okay. You know? Yeah. I understand his, his shortcomings. I, can, I see his efforts where he tried hard. Yeah. I see it all now that I'm older, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's what I understand. Sure. So, and, so I guess the fact that you said you've never you 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 promised yourself never to do what 
he did, what you saw him do, I'm assuming you've never laid a hand on your wife. No. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. No, I've never laid Real a hand talk. on my wife. Yes, my lord. No, Real no, talk. No. no. Sure. Mm. I, 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 I respect you because you know gender-based violence is, is a big scourge. It's, it's, it's something that we've been speaking about in each and every episode. And it's something that we should speak about in each and mm. every episode because every 63 seconds a woman or a child is a, is a victim of gender-based violence. And mm. that can't be. That means, and as long as we are talking in this conversation that I'm having with you, every 63 seconds. So it's almost a minute and, and three seconds. Every minute uh-huh. and three seconds there's a, there's a woman or a child who's a victim of gender-based violence. And we need to call each other out as men in, our, in terms of our behavior, how we behave. A lot of us sit in these WhatsApp groups that are not good for us but we still stay there people are body shaming other people in those groups but you're still there mm. you are you are just as mm. guilty and then you mm. wonder why they say men are trash mm. then, we, we, mm. then we want to excuse ourselves and say no but i'm not trash but you are by virtue of you being in groups that are trashing other people mm. or that are done playing other people who's this other father that you mentioned earlier yeah so there's a there's a book that i picked up it's called rich dead poor dead ah robert yeah, well, Roberto. Yes. Hey, there's, <laughs> numen, there's lots of Robertos. Yeah, there's Roberto. There's Robert. Yes, Kawasaki. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So my other dad, Eli. Okay. Yeah, I remember the first time I met that guy. Uh, who, who is Eli? I don't know who Eli, Eli is. People Eli, don't know who Eli oh, is. Eli is the founder of Boga. Ah, yeah. You yeah. must give context. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, we, people are gonna think Eli is someone we don't know. So he's the founder of of, of Bogat Man. Yeah. Right. How is he your father? Uh, you know, but that guy, uh, out of sharp, Joe, like, uh, I saw his personality and the way he treats people, right? the way he does business, the way he handles bad situations. And just I saw, like, in a nutshell, all, all, the, all, all the things that he had, and I said, that guy's my dad, I'm adopted. Right. I adopted him as a dad, and I die when I am my pops. Did you, from, did you tell him, I'm adopting yeah, you as my dad? I'm yeah. Yeah. alive. Yeah. He's yeah. also a fashion designer by qualification, isn't he? Yes. Well, not by qualification, but by street, the universe. Okay. Because already, like, he was in that in field, the space. and okay. he's just always been there. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, so he's your dad. Did he adopt you, or did you ask him to adopt you as as his father after your dad passed on, or was it before? No, I just adopted on? him as a dad. It yeah, but what I'm saying at that point was your dad still alive? Or? No, no. Okay, no. so your dad had, had passed on. Yeah, he had passed on. Okay, yeah. and, and how's your relationship with him? Um, has he? Has he managed to kind of fill that void that your dad had left? No, he's playing a different role. It's not like he's a, a, a replacement. Yes. That's why I need to have got two, two dads. Yeah. yeah. So my, my biological dad has played his own role. Right. And uh, he's played his own role. Yeah. So I might have another dad. Now sometimes you're my dad. Yeah, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm, yeah. I'm too young to be your father. We're no, 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 the same no, no, age. no, 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 no. It's not how old are you? How old are you? I'm 43 this year. Uh, I'm 44. So how can I be your dad when I'm a year not, older than you? No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pulling your leg. No, I'm just pulling your leg. I know, I know what you mean. It's, it's, it's the father figure. You yes. Know, it's, it's, there's something about me that you want to pull yes. from that person. Of course. No, I'm just pulling your so, leg. So <laughs> in that moment, when I, when I see something, I can learn from you. Absolutely. I become a son. No, no, no. Because true. now true. I can like, okay. That's what fathers do, actually. True, true. Yes. True. No, I, I, I actually appreciate that. Uh, just last week, I, I posted something with my daughter. So she went on to, um, I, I didn't know this about her. Uh, apparently, she was the captain of the netball team in the area that we live in. You know, I'm not going to mention the area because then people know where I live. Was so, this on your visa weekend? Uh, no, before the visa weekend. Oh. Yeah. So, so I didn't know that she's a captain for the netball team. And I just found out from my wife. And I said to her, Congratulations, why didn't you tell me? She said to me, no, because I, I just didn't think I needed to because that's how humble she is. Mm. But I got inspired by that. So inspiration is not always about people who are older than you. Mm. We could be inspired mm. by someone who's way younger than you because we draw inspiration from different spaces and, and, and people and that's what it's about. So mm. I'm happy to be your father for just the show. And after Thanks, the show, daddy. you can go find Thank another you, daddy. Papa. Go ask Ronnie <laughs> and Roberto to be your dad after this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So this this show this show is really what this is about, you know. I mean, you come in here, there's no script. We get to talk about other things, and now I discovered that you know, uh, your dad went through a, a terrible experience that led to him taking his life away. Um, what do you want to say to um, a man out there who's who's listening right now or who's watching um, this particular podcast who's suicidal, who's feeling like yo, 
I'm I'm about to take my life away and I, I there's nothing worth living for. What what do you want to say to that man? He's really not sure whether he's coming or going, you know, things are not going well. He's been going for all these job interviews, no one is employing him. He's running a business that's failing, he's just got trenched. Things are just not looking up, you know. His wife wants to leave him. No one respects him in the community he lives in and is about to take his life away. Mm. You've experienced that. Mm. What do you want to say to that man right now? I want to say to that guy, which he must speak up. First and foremost, speak up. Yeah. As soon as you speak about your problem, it's out there. That's one, one less problem. Now you've released it into the universe. And people will start coming back to you one by one yeah. with the things. But you have to be honest when you're speaking up and tell them why you're so suicidal. Yeah. Are you sick? Is it financial things? Because nobody wants people to kill themselves. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So as soon as you speak out, people will help you. Yeah. You'll be surprised how many people are willing to help out there. So people must just um, put their ego aside yeah. and actually and speak pride. up. Yeah, that's Man. what it is. Man. You know, we've got these Superman uh, Tigers don't cry. Ah, Men must not up. show weakness. I just, um, you know, the beauty about this show is, like I said uh, earlier on, it's unscripted. There's no plan. I see your your your, your father just walked in. Yes. Do you, want, do you want him to come and sit next to you so that we can see who this man is? We've been talking about this father. I want him to come and sit here and oh, tell us why is your father. Uh, we said it's unscripted, guys. So you can't say you're doing a show that's unscripted and not be able to move with the times. Uh, let's 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 take a moment and welcome uh, Tato's father, Eli. Yes, this is what it's about, you know, getting uh, getting uh, men to really talk about everything and anything that affects us as men. You know, whether you are a single, you married, you divorced, you widowed, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, we we come with our own um, uh, stories to share. We come with our own uh, pains. We come with our own joys. Eli, how are you? Are you well, sir? Thank you, thank you, thank you for having us in your studios. <laughs> this is my first time in the studio. Is it your first time in the studio? So, <laughs> <My> studio, so. <laughs> in your studio. <laughs> so we've been having a, a conversation um, with Tato, and um, you know, he told me about how you know his father took his life away at some point, and how he then found another father in you. Um, he spoke about how. You, you know, emulated a lot of things um, that he wishes he could, you know, have as a man himself and obviously instill in his sons. He's got four sons. How does it make you feel to have someone that looks up to you so much so that he actually calls you a father? You know, actually it's something amazing in a way when you have uh, someone trust you in this way to call you as a father. Mm. But in the same time, when I know the story of Chester a long time ago, it's also about the person yeah. who is willing to give. Because we have, people will will try to help. Yeah. But they also want the guy to receive the help. Sure. Anyway. So always what I saw about Chester all the time. He's an amazing person. He trusts a lot of things. But he's got something about him when he spark, you know, and he make me in a way to take the challenge and do things together. So, because I do believe in him, yeah, you know, it's one of the the best designer what we had in the border. Sure, and we're working close together. But uh, he's willing also to change. He was there, right? He's willing to accept things. He was there, and that's what helped me to to help him yeah. in a way. But you know, you can give help to many people, but they don't know how to receive it. True, you need to learn how to receive it in a good way, hmm. and. Uh, that's a luck what we had together. And that's sure. why we are uh, working nicely together. We're feeling happy to, in a work environment. Yeah. And uh, his kids also amazing kids. You know, he grew up, uh, he's a good father. That's what I love about him, what mm. I saw about him. Mm. I've you know? seen some videos of him uh, with his with his two sons trying to get their skill on the soccer field <laughs> out there, and he's, he's chickering the other one there. He's like, "Hey, you come back! No, no, don't hold, don't hold." And so, so it's beautiful to actually see that you know, the 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 amatam, amat, the, the word amatima is a is a kasi slogan for someone who's respected. It's a father figure, and we always try to make a lot of men understand that fatherhood is not about biology. It's got mm, nothing to do with biology. Exactly. And here's a case in point of two men um, from different walks of life who have found each other in their journey of life, and he has found a father in you, and he's made it clear that 
you are not replacing his biological father at by no means but you've 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 you've, you've shown such characteristics of 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 yourself as a man as a human being that he aspires to right that's what you said he's right here now you're quiet i'm no, no, i'm shocked because now you're quiet he's here no. you were going on about how great he is and now that he's here your father is here you can't say anything about your father in his no, in his presence you're still talking. give him his flowers whilst he's here what no he's still talking no. first of all <laughs> myself in a way i don't like uh, i don't wait for gratitude from people yeah i like to see action because gratitude is something but I don't take it for granted in a way. Sure. But I look for action. And he done the action what he needs to do. Yeah. So he by himself correct things. He just needed the backside to be behind him. Sure. And that's what was my job, to be behind him, to know everything will be okay. We have challenges. We will come up from this. And But it's everything on himself sure. in a way. Sure. So he created for himself, for himself the space. Yeah. And he created for himself the success. Yeah. Okay, but for me to do this role was very, very easy because sure. the, the guy in front of me was an amazing guy. Oh, that's beautiful. And mm. by the way, there is other people also in our company, same role like him. Mm. In a way, Absolutely. And they also get the whole support what we can do. Absolutely. This is about, about. Um, the foundation of the company also mm. to make sure to take care of the people. It's not everything about money. Absolutely. Mm. It's sometimes it's about the good word. Some of them um, uh, in the morning, if you say good morning, yeah. so someone, you, you, you acknowledge him. Makes a know. difference. Mm. They, feel they, they feel important because you don't know what people are going through. 100%. We are all going through a lot and that good morning, that handshake, that smile, that hug, mm. could make a significant difference in 100%. someone's life. You know? yeah. What do you want to say to your father? Me, I just, you know, I just want to say thank you, you know, thank you for for being who you are because you showed me your true self, you, sh you showed me your true person your personality and your capabilities, and you taught me the word uh, aspiration. You know, before aspiration. I, before I came to Pogart, yeah, I didn't know the word aspiration. Aspiration. So yeah. it's a very powerful word. Blind. Because we much. all aspire to something. Yes. Great. So once you fully understand that word. You understand how greater you can still become. You there's always room for de like development. Yeah. So ever since then, like every day, I feel myself getting better and better and better. And I'm aware that I'm not the same guy that I was yesterday. Absolutely. I'm a new guy, and we just keep growing like that. Sure. So he's a he's, uh, thank you for being uh, such an important part of my growth. You know what I mean? Sure. And uh, for for being there for my kids, you know, like your. You, they always speak about you. You're an amazing guy. You know, you like heaven sent. Thank sure. you so much. Thank he you. Well yeah. Yeah. Heaven uh, sent. Well. Heaven mm. sent. And this is what it's about. And I, I'd like to, obviously, as I close, take this opportunity to th to thank you for allowing for this collaboration between Bogart Radio and Amatima because men need to talk. Men need to have a platform for us to be able to vent about what we go through. Um, we don't celebrate enough you know, good men out there. It's always bashing men. And I think it's time that we actually highlight the good men that are around us. I'm sitting in front of two good men. And I'm sure these two good men are a role model to other good men out there. And we're trying to build a society of good men through this and really having unscripted conversations. There's no script. I don't come here with a, a, a notepad to have a conversation with mm -hmm. men. And um, this was really unplanned but what a blessing to have someone yeah. right here that you can actually give them the flowers whilst they're still alive we wait mm. until people are dead Eish. to tell them how we felt about them instead of giving them the flowers mm. whilst they're still alive and i'd like to thank you both gentlemen you are really inspiring and i know that this episode is going to be very popular because it's unscripted unplanned Spong and city Danko Amatayma, in partnership with pocket radio thank you sir thank and you. also yes thank sir thank you thank you my lord i mean um you're a big brand okay yeah. you could have been anywhere but you chose to be with us yes sir and um as an aspirational brand the one thing that we wanted to do was actually have a voice yeah the whole reason behind the studio is to have a voice we have an image but now we have a voice sure you know now we can actually uh, groom men to be actually better men Absolutely. they can now now they can look better they can think better they can do better mm. they can speak better Mm. All because of your your uh, willingness to join us. Thank you. Sir. Your role is so 
great here and we really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. See vale. Till the next episode. Uh, catch us on YouTube on the Amatima uh, YouTube page as well as the Pocket Radio YouTube page. Is a Wanana City. Danko.